Friday afternoon, and we're closing out yet another active weather day across the U.S. There's a look at the surface weather map early this afternoon. Very active system in the southern Great Plains. And today, we have a meteorological bomb off the east coast. Now, fortunately, this was not very far inland. This remained probably a good 300 miles offshore. However, pressures dropped probably a good 35 to 40 millibars in 24 hours. And really, all we need is a drop of 24 millibars to classify that as a meteorological bomb. Not really any effects for those of us here in the U.S., but in the Canadian Maritimes, Nova Scotia, Halifax, and Newfoundland will be getting a pretty good chunk of this system as it passes by late tonight into tomorrow. And you can see a mix of rain, sleet, and snow hitting that area pretty hard, as well as winds due to the very strong pressure gradient. And that wind will initially be out of the north, shifting around to the west as that passes. And getting back to our surface map, we've got system number two out there in the Great Plains. That's the warm sector right there extending up to Childress and Lawton. And up to the north, a reinforcing surge of Canadian polar air coming south. The temperatures back behind that, not very cold, 30s and 40s. But it's enough to produce some snow up around Sioux City, southwestern Minnesota, and northern Nebraska. And then we have another little system out there south of San Diego, south of Los Angeles. And we'll look at that on the satellite image. Let's head out to the Pacific. We'll start with the inland regions, and we do have fog in the valleys from the San Joaquin up to the Columbia and Fraser River valleys. And that's due to cold moisture that's trapped in these valley areas, San Joaquin, Columbia, and Fraser River valleys. Then looking out into the Pacific, and let's see how far we can get that over, we go up to the north, British Columbia getting a series of strong Pacific systems. This next one is off the chart, but that is producing a lot of lightning activity. Unfortunately, it's only merchant ships that are going to be seeing that, but I'd imagine probably some very impressive cloud forms. Then looking at Alaska, the weather really depends on where you are. Very cold up in the north slope, getting that north flow. However, down to the south, some rain being reported out around Wasilla up to the passes around, I guess that would be just south of Fairbanks. Temperatures up to the north, very cold, minus 10, minus 20. However, the really bitter cold air is found up in Banks Island, minus 37, minus 35 up there at Victoria Island. And that's probably about the extent of that. That's going to be the core of the coldest air. However, down to the south looks like downslope flow. Temperatures moderating into the teens and 20s. And then we've got more cold air out there in Quebec, and that's going to interact with that system down to the south. Let me put that together there. So that's going to help firm up the temperature contrasts within that system as it tracks across Newfoundland. And let me show you this one plot. Yeah, there we go. That's going to be the thermal structure of that system as it tracks up across Newfoundland. And it will be approaching warm core criteria. And that's due to the extensive release of latent heat in this system. And that kind of gives us sort of like tropical storm characteristics for a brief time. And this is a little bit weaker than what it was forecasting yesterday. It had it more up in that range right there. 
Now, of course, the big weather system everybody is focused on is that one in the south central U.S. heading into the east coast region. Now, instead of jumping right in and looking at lows and fronts, I think it's really important to look at the air masses. So we're going to look at the 850 millibar temperature, and you can see that gradient right there. That's what's feeding that system. You can see the tight contrast right there, the wave structure up north. That is what is helping that system to come together. And if we roll this forward in time, you can see it wrapping up right there. That's going to be about the current time. And it really starts developing into a frontal wave early tomorrow morning. And then we're looking at Sunday morning here when it's starting to cross the Appalachians and head into the eastern seaboard region. And there's Monday morning. It's going to be a mess up in the northeastern U.S., that low pressure system, you can see even at 850, it's well inland. So instead of that meteorological bomb that we have today, which is way offshore, way out here, this next system is going to be right up on the coast. And we're not going to have it out of our hair until Tuesday. And look at that. Notice that wave that we have at the very start of the sequence, it's developing yet again. So it's another Alberta Clipper coming together. This one, however, is further up north. Most of the Bear Clinic contrast up in the Midwest region. One little area of interest right there in the High Plains. And that becomes sort of anticyclonic, actually. And then another push of cold air coming down for about seven or eight days from now. So we're going to be locked into this PNA pattern for quite a while. Yeah, there's another one for the 25th. Now, we can't forecast that far ahead, but that kind of shows you that we're kind of mired in this pattern. And it looks very cold for the eastern states and warm out west. Now, of course, the moment of truth, let's look at it on the pressure and thickness chart. This is what you all are familiar with. When we do these surface analyses on the opening of this program. So starting out the sequence, this is where we're at right now. Inverted trough extending up from the Childress, Texas area. And this is an area of strong cyclogenesis. Pressure falls and divergence aloft, working on that area. And an associated precip field that moves out into Missouri later tonight, and then by tomorrow morning, it's moved into Arkansas, and we see the development of this Bear Clinic low. The front's running about like that. I would say that the warm front is actually well to the south. Maybe that curves up a little bit. Maybe this is starting to occlude by that time. It's kind of hard to tell with the limited data, but already by Early Sunday, it's very well evolved. That's going to be an occlusion back there over Mississippi with a large deformation zone extending over much of Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. And out ahead of it, this is the main Bear Clinic zone. And the fronts are going to be looking like that. That's definitely going to be the warm front. And then this area of overrunning in eastern Georgia and South Carolina. And as you get closer to the cold air at the surface, we pick up sleet freezing rain, and snow. Also wrap around in the deformation zone all the way back into Memphis and northwestern Mississippi. This is early Sunday. And then Sunday itself will be a very busy day in the eastern U.S. You can see some cold air damming right there, the pressure contours extending kind of towards the southwest which indicates that the colder air has not been able to climb the Appalachians and move over to the west side. It's stuck here, and so the pressures are a little bit higher than we would expect, and that gives us that wedge-like appearance to the pressure field. As the system continues moving to the northeast later on Sunday into Monday, a lot of mixed precip forms from Washington, D.C. up to New York and Boston. Pretty much north of that line looking at snow and sleet. And down to the south of that line, southeast of that line, rain and deep convection. 
and we can see a lot of that snow will extend all the way up towards Toronto and Montreal. And then we're finally clear of that by Tuesday. There comes the next system. Looks to be dry except east of the Mississippi. Rain snow line somewhere around the Ohio River. And then late next week, looks like development of the southern stream. You're going to see that come together and interact with this block of cold air over Texas. And there it is. Extensive overrunning, possibly some snow up towards Interstate 20, and heavy rain down in South Texas. And since we are still in that PNA pattern, another round of cold air coming south. And then at the very end of the chart sequence, there comes another push of cold air. So is that actually what's going to happen? Well, as you can see, I've switched over to the European model. This is the ECMWF IFS system. It's about as good as the GFS, if not better. And this comes from a Europe. So let's see how the evolution of that system compares. At the very start, looks about the same. Inverted trough. And you notice that I went over the GFS verbally, and that makes it very easy to switch over to the European model and spot the differences. So here it looks about the same. The cold front coming south. And then we have that southern front about like that. So running this forward looks very similar. A little bit less snow for Saturday. And I noticed the GFS was pretty bullish with those snowfall totals. Yeah, there you go. That's how the GFS looked. Up to 6 inches, maybe some 9-inch amounts in the Ozarks. And 15 inches in Nashville. Looks like the European model has similar characteristics. And to me, that convection looks a little bit warmer as it's depicted by the European model. But eventually it does pick up the snow in Tennessee. And everything that I'm seeing points to a very high possibility of heavy snow in Tennessee, but a little less certain out in the Ozarks. The evolution of the system looks very similar to the GFS. At first glance, I'm not really spotting any differences. There's good consistency between the two models. And even the rain-snow line looks pretty similar. And that's a good sign. We don't want our forecast to be complicated by model divergence. And let's take a quick look ahead at the next system. Yeah, that looks similar to the GFS. And then we get into that overrunning. When was that? I can't remember exactly when that was. Maybe the 25th, 26th. Anyway, that's quite a ways out there, and we can look at that next week. What's going on here? Chroma key problems. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we eliminated those microphone boom problems. I was editing. It sounded like a train was going by or something. Anyway, we've got the satellite. This is the infrared satellite. Good time to look at that. That's that system right there in the Iowa, Nebraska area in that S shape on the backside. That's indicative of a bear clinic leaf. Upper level lift working on that area, upper level dynamics, and can run back the past few hours, and you can see that come together. And off the east coast, yeah, there's our meteorological bomb and a vast area of cold air advection, and there's actually some lightning within those cells. In fact, I can show that to you. They've got these neat little overlays, GLM flashes. This is College of DuPage. And you can see those flashes right in that stuff right there. And then the actual air clinic zone, the occlusion way up here. Yeah, there's also some flashes within that stuff. And then there's the visible satellite imagery. We'll zoom in and take a look at some areas. Looks pretty quiet out west, so we're not going to really focus on that. But maybe it's a good time to take a look at this stuff and maybe what's happening in the Midwest. 
Yep, there's our frontal system coming together. The actual zone is actually up to the north, but it is windy enough to pick up some dust in West Texas. Yep, there it is, gusting to 35 at Lubbock. And further up north, we got gusts to 43 at Amarillo, blowing dust. And a little further up north. Yep, nothing quite touching. Yeah, actually, this station is up at 50. Sublet and Garden City getting some massive north winds raging through that zone and one mile visibility there at Sublet, and that's undoubtedly due to blowing dust. And a lot of fog in Stratus in Ohio and Indiana. There it is right there. Lots of cold, moist air near the ground, starting to set up that warm air advection pattern. And, yep, one last day of sunny skies in Tennessee before they get the big winter storm. And a good time to take a look at those watches and warnings. That's the outlay for this afternoon, winter weather advisory for much of the central U.S. And winter storm warning from southwestern Minnesota down to northern Missouri. Various wind advisories across Texas, western Oklahoma, and west Kansas. And winter storm watches for the remainder of the east central U.S., a lot of that area subject to change. And that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed Forecast Lab. We will see the supporters back here on Monday. Remember to be a supporter. You can go to patreon.com slash metlab. And for everybody else, we will see you here on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.